Hey, good day, folks. Welcome to another episode of Andrew's Life. I hope everyone's doing great today. This video is going to be about being weird. Yes, I'm not sure what the title of the video is going to be. I haven't thought up that far yet, but this video is going to be about being weird. And when I say weird, I'm talking from a financial standpoint. Now, again, this is not financial advice. This is just a way of life that I chose to adopt that I wish I would have adopted in my life a lot sooner. But for those of you that are watching this video and you're in your 20s, you're in your early 30s, you can adopt this life today right now the second you get done watching my video. And I guarantee if you do, your life will be 10 times better than, than the average Joe's life. It will definitely be better than my life by the time you get to be my age. Now this video is kind of sort of going to piggyback off of the video that I made yesterday. Uh, Got to think why I titled the video. The video that I made yesterday about not taking shortcuts in life, this video is going to kind of piggyback off of that video. So if you haven't watched that video yet, when you get done watching this one, go back and watch that one. But anyways, with that video in mind, I'm going to talk about being weird financially. And this is what you need to do in order to be financially weird. Again, when you're in your 20s or early 30s, preferably your 20s or even your late teens, the second you get out of high school, like the second, the, 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 yeah, the, the second you graduate high school, uh, if you already know that you're going to go to college because you want to be a doctor or a nurse or something of that nature, obviously, uh, go ahead, complete your four years of school. As soon as you get out of high school, that is, I mean, I wouldn't sit around and wait for a year or two. I would go ahead and go to college, knock all that out, earn your degree. Because the younger you are with that degree, the sooner that you're able to get into your field of work, the, the, the more money you can make at a younger age, and the more money earlier in your life that you can set aside in retirement funds or, you know, things of that nature. If you're not going to go to college and you're going to instead go into a trade, again, I would advise you to get into that trade as soon as you get out of high school. Now, obviously, if you're going to go earn your CDL, uh, you have to wait until you're 21 in order to earn a CDL, I believe. So, the, I mean, basically, the message is the second that you're able to going to whatever trade you're going to go into, you know, do what you got to do to get into that trade or that field. And sometime in your mid-20s or at the very latest or early 30s, you should be out here working your butt off. And what I mean by working your butt off, I'm talking about if you're working at a warehouse or a factory and you're working, let's say, 60 hours, 50 to 60 hours a week. I mean, some of you might think, well, that's a lot of hours. And yeah, it is a lot of hours and it's going to be a lot of hard work, which is why I advise you guys to work your butt off when you're younger, when youth is more on your side, time is more on your side during your 20s and your early 30s. So if you're working a job like that, for those of you that choose to not go into a trade, you choose to not go to college, you just want to get out here and work and get your money how you get your money. Legally, I'm speaking, of course. In conjunction to working that job, there's a couple of other things that you can do for additional money on top of that money. Now, some of you may not be able to do what I'm getting ready to suggest because maybe your health ain't good enough or maybe you got some other reasons but like with me back when I was broke back when I had to pay off my debts back when I was uh, working on paying off my house at the time I donated plasma and at the time that I was donating plasma I donated plasma twice a week and I made 350 bucks a month on donating plasma. So I did that and I worked my nine to five. 
Now, if I worked a job that only worked me 40 hours a week, I worked that job, donated plasma, and I worked a second job. Now, another suggestion is, and I don't know if this suggestion is going to be a reality. It depends on what happens in uh, Washington. If the oil fields ever start drilling again, like they were back in 2018 and 2019. For those of you that are uh, healthy enough, I would advise you to, to try to get into the oil field. Now, if you get into the oil field, it's very, you know, depending on what you do out there, it can be very hard work. The hours are going to be very long. You will be going away from your house for weeks at a time. But if you can endure that for even a couple of years, the money you earn out there will, can, can change your whole entire life from a, from a financial standpoint. It did me. So that's another option for some of you. And for those of you that go to school, that choose to go to college and you choose to, and you have to take out a student loan. Now me personally, knowing what I know now, I wouldn't advise anybody to go to school, taking out any student loans. But if you choose to go that route, Obviously, the second you graduate school and you get into your job of the, and you get into your field, the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to completely pay off your student loans. You're going to want to do that even before you buy your first home. So, FYI for those of you that choose to go to school. So, while you're out here working your butt off during your 20s and your 30s, this is what you're going to want to do with the money that you earn working your butt off because you're going to be making a crap load of money. And yes, you will be tired. And no, you will not have a whole lot of time to hang out with your friends and you fellas are not going to have a whole lot of time to chase the women. But you know what? Bear with me. Because I guarantee when you get older, you will thank me for giving you this piece of advice. So with this money that you're earning because you're out here working your butt off. Once you've been working your butt off for, I would say, at least a year. Uh, some people might disagree with what I'm getting ready to say, but you're going to want to go ahead and purchase your home. Not rent, but purchase. So once you've been working your butt off for at least a year, you like where you live, you know where you want to live. And another disclaimer I'm going to throw in, this would also be depending on the housing market. Now the housing market that we're currently in right now, uh, I wouldn't advise anyone to go out here and purchase a home right now. I would advise you to just sit back and wait if, if you're able to. But in the future when housing prices come down a little bit, which I believe they will because what's going on right now is not sustainable. But after you've been working your butt off for at least a year, I would advise you to go out and buy yourself a home, not a condo, because you do not want to be in a community to where you're going to have to pay an association. I would advise you to buy a house in a neighborhood to where there is no association. And when you buy this house, and again, this is not financial advice. This is just something that I believe if you followed, your, your life would be a lot better. So when buying this house, uh, sit down with your bank or your lending institution and ask them how much would I have to pay per month to pay off my mortgage in 15 years because when you buy this house you do not want to take 30 years to pay off your house you want to pay it off in no longer than 15 years 
If you pay off your house in 10 years, that would be even better. And by the way, and this is statistically proven, the average millionaire pays off their house in 10.2 years. FYI. Now, for many of you folks out here, especially right now, it could be very difficult to pay off your house in 10.2 years. So when you take out a mortgage, don't take out a mortgage for any longer than 15 years. And obviously, when taking out this mortgage, you're going to want to bear in mind property taxes, homeowners insurance, repair and maintenance, uh, all the utility costs that, are, that will also be associated with that house. You're going to want to bear all that in mind when, when buying this house. That is not in an association. So you bought your house, you're making these payments, you're going to pay off your house within 15 years because you're going to continue to work your butt off. Because when you buy this house, there's not going to be no, um, there's not, I mean, there's, there's not going to be no major parties at your house. You ain't got time for that. You're too tired. I mean, your head is to the ground. And you're grinding. You're working your butt off trying to get this money good. So when you pay off your house in 15 years, the next thing you're going to want to do is, and honestly, you can probably do this in conjunction to paying off your house, you're going to want to start a retirement fund. I mean, let's be realistic here. None of us are vampires. At some point, we're not going to be able to work. We're not going to want to work. We're going to want to just sit back, relax, live the good life. And uh, some people think that SSI may not be around even by the time I get to be in my early 60s or mid 60s. I can't say the whether that's true or not true. I don't know. None of us knows. You know, a lot of people are just out here speculating. And like I told you guys the other day, if SSI is around, obviously, yes, I'm taking advantage of it because I'm a tax paying citizen and my tax dollars. And my tax dollars are y'all's tax dollars is funding SSI. But even if SSI is around, when any of you guys get to be of age to collect it, SSI is not going to be enough for most of you to be able to live your life until the day you pass on. So you're going to want to have an income in conjunction to your SSI. So whatever job you're working, you're going to want to tap, you're going to want to take advantage of their 401k program. And another thing that you can do is you can get with, uh, you can get with some financial institution like uh, Charles Schwab, for an example, and you can maybe open up some mutual funds with them and you can invest in mutual funds. And that could also be means of building some kind of a retirement. So you're going to want to, but so yeah, while you're paying off your house, you're going to want to put at least a little bit of money aside for retirement. I mean, they suggest that you put aside a minimum of 15% of your income. If you can't do 15%, I don't care if, you, I don't care if you're only able to do 5%, put aside 5%. And then when you pay off your house and whatever other debt you might have, when you pay all that off, the money that you were spending to pay off your house, take all that money and throw it in your retirement. Put it all in your retirement fund. Or you can put maybe a half of it in the retirement and if, you, if you're business savvy and you're wanting to start a business and you know what kind of business you want to get into, you can take maybe half of your money that after you pay off your house, you can take half of that money, use it for your business. You can take the other half of that money and throw it in, into your retirement. So now that your house is paid off, you've got your retirement fund going, you're, you're putting money into your retirement, what do you do next? Well, what, well, what you do next is you continue to work. You continue to work and assuming that you're around my age 
when you get to the point where you're you're uh you're either a you got the option to retire or b you at least have a crap load of money set aside and you're debt free uh the reason why i suggest that you continue to work is for one working is actually good for your health believe it or not working is actually good for your health it's good for your mental health and it's also good for your physical health and also when you continue to work it keeps you from having to dip into the money that you worked hard for that you worked hard to save now i suppose if you get to be my age and you know you got a crap little money saved up and you believe that you have enough money saved up saved up to retire and you really don't want to work any longer then you know that's your prerogative you can do what you do but I would say for most of you, I would, I would suggest that you continue to work. And when continuing to work, you can either continue to work the type of work that you've been doing. Or now that you're debt free and you got a little bit of money saved up, you can quit your job. You can get out of your, your field and you can get into another field of work. You can... Do diff you can do a different type of job. You can work a different type of job if you desire. And one big advantage about being reared during the years that you might still have to work is the fact that you no longer have to work just any old job. You don't have to work a job just because it pays X amount of money and you need that money to be able to pay your bills. You, can, you now have a choice of what type of a job that you desire to work. If the pay is a little lower, so be it. As long as it's enough to where you can pay all your bills and still set a, a little money aside for retirement and maybe have a little bit of fun, you know, that's all you need. Now, of course, it depends on what type of lifestyle that you desire to live. Now, me, I desire to live a simple life. A life to where I earn a decent amount of money, but I spend very little of it. Now, I know some of you, you want to live differently. You want to live more lavishly, and that's cool. You'll just have to adjust your budget accordingly. And uh, when, so just a little, uh, I apologize, I had to stop the video. I had something going on out here and I had to attend to it. But anyways, uh, another advantage of, of being reared, financially reared, I'm, I'm talking, is the fact that when you're out here, you know, once you get yourself to the point to where your finances are in order, you're debt free to include your mortgage, you have money set aside already in retirement. See one one thing that you know one thing that you'll you'll be able to do is you, you, you will be able to pick and choose what type of work you desire to do. Like if you're at a job and you don't like the job for whatever reason, you can quit. Or if you're at a job and the work environment is toxic, kind of like my situation with the job that I walked off of about a couple of months ago. And if you want to listen to that story, I do have that video. I do have that video on this channel. I walked off my job. Now what? That's the title of the video. It's about two months old. But if you get into a situation like that, you can do like what I did. You can take all your stuff out of your locker. You can put it on the supervisor's desk. And you can tell your supervisor, hey, saw another, I'm gone. It ain't working out here, whatever, whatever, and keep it pushing. You don't have to stick around and put up with the BS. So that's one big advantage that you have over most other people when you choose to live your life financially weird.
Now, obviously, also, another thing you're going to want to do, if you truly want to be financially realist, when it comes to buying your vehicles, never, ever, ever, ever take out a car note. Whatever vehicle you can buy and pay cash, that's what you do. If all the money that you have for a vehicle is maybe a couple of thousand dollars and all you can afford is an old rust bucket that's got over 200,000 miles, then that's what you do. That's what you're going to be driving. That's what I do. And when it comes to your clothes, who said you had to go to the department store and buy your clothes new? I mean, I'm going to, I mean, I've told you guys this before, and I'm going to tell you guys again. When I buy my clothes, I go to Goodwill. I'll drive to the closest suburb to where I live, and I will go to that Goodwill and buy clothes. I don't buy new clothes. Every once in a blue moon, I might buy, I might buy some new slacks. But for the most part, I buy my clothes at the Goodwill. And I have no problem admitting that. I have no problem saying it. I don't care what anybody thinks. And neither should you. Because part of being financially weird is to not give two shits about what other people think. Period. Because as you continue to go through your journey of financial, weird, of financial weirdness, you will come to understand that certain people that you thought were your friends really aren't your friends for you for the men some of the women that you thought were into you because of who you are as a person you'll find out eh, that's not exactly true all the time either some of you I'm gonna forewarn you some of you might find yourself alone by yourself because people are gonna look at you sideways like, you know, what's going on with you? So just be prepared for that. Just be prepared to be alone. Until you're able to get among other people that are financially weird like yourself. I just heard something, I just had to look around for a minute. So understand, when it comes to being financially weird, it's, you know, for most people, it's not going to be attractive, it's not going to be sexy, it's not going to be glamorous, it's not going to be flashy. It's going to be something that, it's going to be something that you choose to do because you have the capability to see the much bigger picture down the road, more so than most people will ever have. So when you're sitting up with your paid off house, money set aside in retirement, vehicles paid off, you don't have a car note from Wells Fargo, you have the car title instead, your house is paid off, again, you, you, you are not getting a uh, bill every month to pay your mortgage to Wells Fargo, you now have the deed in your hand instead. When you get yourself to that point, I guarantee, if you watch this video and you take this advice, you will thank me for it. I guarantee you will. Or two, you will at least look up and realize that you're living far better than most other people are. While everyone else is out here working and uh, consuming massive amounts of debt to impress people that don't care two shits about them, you will be sitting nice. Everything paid off, money in retirement, money in the bank, and you will be able to work a job because you want to work a job, not only because it pays X amount of money and... Uh, you got to earn that kind of money or better in order to pay all your bills. You can work a lower paying job and still be able to meet all your financial obligations because of how you set yourself up. And another thing that you're going to not, 
and here's another piece of advice and I probably should have done this I probably should have told you this at the beginning of the video but I'll tell you this right now another piece of advice when it comes to being financially real is never ever 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 tell anybody about your money don't tell none of your friends don't even tell none of your family and if you're dating don't tell them they they do not need to know any of that kind of information until after and, and now when it gets to the point where you and, and like for the fellas out here especially when it gets to the point where uh, you're getting ready to marry her and you're exchanging personal information about yourself just to make sure that it's still going to be a good move for you two to get married that's going to be the time to let her know about your journey to find it that's going to be the time to let her know about your journey uh to financial weirdness but until then she doesn't need to know a darn thing about your money because until then it is none of her business in fact if you're out here dating and for the fillers and the woman asks you what do you do for work I mean, if you want to tell them what you do for work, okay, fine, whatever. Now, I know some men that are working higher paying positions, so they might downgrade. Like, they might work as a lawyer, but they'll tell some of these women that they're a supervisor at a warehouse or some stuff. But if you want to tell them the truth, do what you do. Just have the ability to tell old girl no whenever she wants to blow all your money on, on a bunch of bull crap. Just have, you know, just be able to tell her no. So don't ever, ever, ever tell anybody about your money. I mean, sometimes it can be tempting to tell people about your money because maybe somebody might look at you and they assume you broke, you dusty, you busted, you ain't got nothing, you're you a bum, you're a loser, all that. You know what? If they think you're a loser... Let them think that you're a loser. You have nothing to prove nobody other than yourself. And for those of you that have a family to take care of, your fam yourself and your family, other than that, you have nobody to, you have nobody out here to prove anything to. I mean, I'll give you guys an example. I've I've made several videos about about my uh, difficulty finding the type of work that I want here in Alabama. And there's been people in the comment section on some of those videos that, you know, they, they assume I'm broke. Uh, they assume my money is funny. And you know what? As, as, as my man Red Man said it back in 98, I'll be that. Oh, and by the way, for those of you that, for, for those of you that listen to hip hop and you, and you know Red Man, and you remember that song, I'll Be That, it came out on his, uh, I believe it, it was on his fourth album. I forgot what the album was called, but it was on his fourth album. album. It came out back in 1998. He had a song called I'll Be That. So whenever people want to assume that I'm broke, I'm dusty, whenever people want to get, whenever people want to try to get in my pockets, you know what? I'll be that. So for those of you that want to embark on the journey of financial weirdness, whenever people start trying to get in your pockets, and, and they want to call you broke and dusty and busted, you know what? Just remember, I'll be that. And on that note, I know this video was long, and, and for those of you that stuck it out, I appreciate it. And as always, if you like what I do, give this video a thumbs up. If you haven't done so, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Stay blessed.